All right, today's tutorial, we are going to be making a braking system or a very basic disc brake thing. Uh, for a car, we're going to be making a sketch, then making a body, showing patterns, uh, showing how many have multiple parts, and getting to an explosion, animation, and a drawing. So, we're going to speed run this. When we're making a parts, a disc brake, we're going to start by doing a sketch, clicking this plane over here, and our disc brake is going to be a circle. So we'll start by picking a point over here. I'm going to pick a diameter of the disc brake. Something that makes sense is like, it's like 20 centimeters. It's a big disc brake, so 200 is the outer diameter of our disc brake. And then let's start by... Uh, that's going to be our outer diameter of our disc brake. Then let's... Uh, make an inside part, so let's just say 60, 60 looks fine. This is going to be our disc brake. Then I want to make like cooling fins for our disc brake. Uh, it allows water to go through, so it gives us weather protection, and it allows the heat to dissipate on the braking system. I want to make a, I'm going to make a spline, which is this one over here. Uh, it's also available over into here. I'm going to make a spline. I want my spline to start from like here and finish at uh, just picking a point over here. I'll press enter and then I can adjust these green lines to choose like the angle of the spline I want. And let's say I want this particular, that looks about right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that line and I'm going to offset. If I offset, I can get a, a line that follows that curve in a direction. So let's say I want that curve to be 2.5, and then I want an offset of this one again over here, but it's going in the other direction. That's a minus 2.5. And so what offset has done is it's, this is my original line, and offset allowed me to get a line that um, is the same di um, distance away from the line. So it's 2.5 millimeters from here, 2.5 millimeters from here, and the whole Thing follows 2.5 millimeters, similar to like a parallel line. Right? Uh, then we want to finish off, uh, we want to make this a closed shape. So I'm going to go make a circle, click this point over here, open up the circle to there, click this point, open up the circle to there. Now I'm going to uh, trim the parts of the line I don't need. So now we're going to trim the parts that we don't need. We don't need this middle part. We don't need, we don't need this. We don't need this. Uh, I don't know if we need, oh, we don't need this. We don't need that. We don't need this. So now we have this um, part of the break over here. We are now going to do a circular pattern. We will, we're still in the sketching menu. I'm going to go create. We will then uh, create a circular pattern. Click the circular pattern. The objects we want, we want all of these lines. Right, all of these lines. The center point is this point down here. And now look what's happening. It's automatically turning into like a Beyblade. Uh, we can change the numbers we want. So let's say we want a, a really high power. Ooh, six. Eight? Yeah, we'll do eight. So we do eight and it's copying that line eight times. And we can press OK. And so now those lines have copied everywhere. Um, these lines, they're all patterns. So I believe if you press the original line over here, if we move this, they all move. All right? Because they're all following off the original pattern. So like if you want to change your offset value or whatever, you can do that. You might also want to, when I trimmed it, I deleted the middle part, which meant I deleted the, the constraint for the offset. You can keep that middle line so you can adjust your offset later. Uh, just don't copy that middle line because you're not going to need it for the other copies. Uh, but we like this. Uh, oh, sorry. Go this over here. So now we want to make this into 3D. So I'm going to finish the sketch. Finish sketch. If I press this face, see so it's just highlighted the outside of the disc shape I want. I'll extrude it. And how thick should it be? Like five millimeters? That's about right. 
enter. All right, there we have the basis of our disk break. Um, all right, so we have our disk break. Now let's get another part. The disk break on, on its own isn't really useful. It's got to connect to the axle somehow. So I'm going to make like a hub that's going to connect to the axle. I'm going to do something a bit different for this one. I'm going to show you using a revolve tool to do this because I want it to look like 3D. It's sort of going to look like a cone. I think you'll understand when I, when I show you it in 3D. So I'm going to do a sketch. But for this sketch, I'm going to do this view over here. I'm then going to uh, sketch a shape like... Uh, hold on, I just want to physically see how high... All right, it was 600, right? 60 high. So I want to get a line that goes up. I know it's at... It was at 60 diameter. So I believe it has to be at least that high. Uh, now let's go up to here. I'm just guessing these shapes because... This angle over here, I want this to be 35. All right. Oh, that's way too high. Uh, let's bring this down a bit. How do I bring this down? Uh, we want this line to be from this line to this line. So we want this to be 40. How about 40? No? <laughs> so I have this line here. I want it to be 40 high. So I'm going to fix this point over here in the sketch. So this isn't going to move. I'm then going to go to dimensions. I'm going to pick this line over here. And I want this to be 40. If I do this right, I think the whole thing is going to move. All right, yes. All right, so let's say that's the height I want it at. And then I can just change everything else. I'm gonna change all these again. I want it to be, I want, basically what I'm trying to do here is I want this part to be like around this area of the brake because I'm gonna make screw holes. And that's where the brake pad is gonna link like with a linking thing that's gonna connect it to like the shaft. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going back to this view. So we've got this, and now let's just make it look pretty. Uh, we want it to be like this. Uh, this is going to be at 45. We're going to do it to connects. Okay. Uh, that is going to be the hollow. Let's just make this the hollow part over here. And, uh, no, my mistake. It's going to be down. This has to go down like this. And then it can go like that. There we go. All right, let's clean off the stuff that we don't want. We don't need this. Uh, let's use our offset again to make this particular line uh, that's useless. We can't do that. Let's just clean up this line over here. We want... We want to get a line that's 45. And then all we want to do is this distance over here. We want this to be equal to the same thickness as this thickness. No, not that one. Um, as this as this thickness. So this one is going to equal that one. There we go. Okay. And then let's just trim everything we don't need. We don't need this, this, or this, or this, or this. But we do need we do need a line down here, and we get need to do, we do need a straight line down here. All this line is going to do is we're going to get this shape and we're going to be revolving this shape around 
this line down here. The actual, this shape itself doesn't exactly matter, but we do need a solid surface, sorry, a solid, a closed shape and a line that we're going to revolve around. So when we finish this and we look in 3D, we have a shape that looks like this. If we, all right, if we, we're going to use the revolve tool, so we're going to be creating, revolving, uh, press that shape that we just, we select that surface that we have. The axis we want is here, and we're going to get a, a part that looks like that. The revolve, okay. So we're going to go here, we're going to press revolve. Um, let's pretend it's not selected for whatever reason. Under our profile is this shape over here. And the axis, so we're, we're revolving it around this line that we made here. All right, so you're getting it and you're spinning it around, which gives us this shape over here. Your revolve, by default, is going to do 360, but in theory, you can do like a, a semi-revolve if your shape needs that. Like, um, yeah, well, you'll visibly see it. Visibly see it with 360. Um, and you can do your normal operations like extrusion. You can change in both directions. You can make a new body. If your things were touching, for whatever reason, it's going to try to automatically join it. But uh, if you're following along with this tutorial, we definitely want it to be a new body because we're going to do multiple bodies for our um, animation. All right, we'll press OK. So we have this part over here. This is where our brakes going to connect to. Uh, next thing we want to, we want to actually align these two things together. So we are going to go to modify. We're going to press the align tool. What the align tool is going to do is it's going to allow us to actually make these two parts connect together. All right. so how the align tool is you pick one part to go from one to the other. We want to get this face over here. This face over here, we want it to touch the brake cylinder. So um, give me your eyes over here, please, because uh, this is going to be hard for me to show you multiple times. We have, I want to align this face over here with this part of the brake pad. So when you do the align tool, which again, the align tool is over here, in the align tool, as you're hovering your mouse over it, see how it's producing all these weird shapes? Mm -hmm. These all mean um, it's trying to visualize what you want to align. And because you can align parts that aren't actually there. For example, if I try to align over this part over here, see how it, it says that it has that square circle shape in the middle? That's saying, oh, do you want to align from the center of this cylinder that it's trying to imagine? In our particular case, we want to align this part over here, oh, if I hide it, it might be better to explain. If I hide this body over here, we want to align this cylinder over here. As I hover over it, it has this face that's generated. Right? So I want to align this shape with this circle over here. Yeah. Oh, if you just hover over the circle, it's, uh, it looks like it automatically snapped to the center. So wherever you're putting your mouse, if I hover the perimeter of the circle, it's going to draw that red circle in the center. Sorry, not red. That square circle in the center. It's saying, oh, do you mean the center of this circle? Well, yes, we do. And actually, if I hide it, you're going to see some cool animation. If I hide it and I'll show you. If we do this, it should go. Oh, never mind, no animation. But it's linked those two parts. It's aligned those two circles together. That is the shape that we want. All right, cool. Now let's let's show you how we're going to make the nut that's going to connect these two things together. Um, we are going to we'll do the revolve function again because that seems to work. But we will. How much space do we have? Inspect measure. We have ten millimeters. Okay. So we want our screw to be much less than 10 millimeters. Ah, uh, close. All right, let's hide these two bodies for now. Let's go make another sketch. We're going to make one of the nuts. We're going to go over here. We are just going to make up the shape that we want. So we want like, uh, oh. Oh, 
right, uh, this over here, we want this side over here to be, go away. We want this length over here to be, uh, we want it to be, I want it to be eight millimeters, just because I'm just picking a size. Eight divided by two. And then I want this length over here. This length over here to be four divided by two. But I want it to be this side. Can you go up? Here? Four divided by two. Um, I think the thickness was five and five, so the overall size. I want this to be two mil. Uh, let's make it. Let's make it four. Four mil, and I want this to be this length to be uh, twenty. It's five and five, I think. So yeah, we'll do a bit extra. We'll deal with it later. All right, so I just got this size over here. This is a screw that I made. I'm going to do the revolve tool again. Press the plane, press the axis. Should be the 3D shape here. Uh, we can go full cool now. Let's also make it, since we're here, we may as well put the effort to make this look nice. We'll click this face over here. Oh, so we're sketching. Let me show you again. We're going to do a sketch. I want to sketch right on this face here. Sketch it. I want to make a, uh, a polygon. I want to make... A inscribed polygon. Press the center over here. So I'm going to make it a hex. I just made a hexagon in there. Press OK. So when we go over here, let's we should be able to press this face and go in, and we just want to cut. So it's turning into a like a hex, hex nut to make it look cool. Um, we can also create, we can also make a thread. If we press thread, I believe we can just press this over here and should turn that shape into a thread. Nice. Yeah, it's that easy. Okay, so now if we unhide our bodies, we have our, we have our nut there. All right, we want to um, you want to drill this into our sh part. Um, we need to align it up. Uh, can we get a move it? Because uh, the issue is I want to get an exact spot over here where we're going to uh, put our object. So how do we do that? If we move... We want to move this shape, right? We want to move it to the. We want to move this particular shape. Move, press the center, please. There you go. We want this to go to. Uh, we want it to go exactly to the origin. That's going to be easier for us to. We want to move this. Hmm. Move to the origin, please. Ah, all right, let me show you what I did there. So, okay, the plan of what I'm trying to do with this screw here, oh boy, okay. The plan I'm trying to do with this screw is I want to get this screw into an exact position up here, right? The issue, the problem I'm having is, um, the problem I'm having is 
it's not in the very center of the map, uh, very center of the the drawing right now. So what we're going to do is we are going to make uh, we're going to move it right into the center of the drawing, and then later we can move it uh, with a distance that we can define later. So to move this, I want to move, I want to make this dot over here align with the center of the circle because that's the origin in our drawing. We're going to press the move function. We're going to select this body. Uh, sorry, over here for the move type, we're going to do translate. We are going to select this body over here. We are going to so not, uh, point to point. Sorry, not translate. Point to point, we're going to select this body. The origin point is whichever point we want it to move from, so this point over here. And we want it to move to this point over here. And then that moves the screw down to that direction. Now, we want to move the screw, we want it to be somewhere over here. So this is at 30 degrees. But how do we, how do we get that translation? I believe if we get the object, we can... Uh, translate it. Uh, how do we do this? We might be able to make a construction. Can we make a line? Uh, axis uh, point between two planes. Uh, what we will do, let's make a sketch. Let's sketch over here. And we want to make a point that is from here to uh, let's make a, a circle. Circle from here. We want the circle to be in the middle of this line. And I believe that's 60 and that's 80. So uh, 60 minus, sorry, 80 minus 60. No. The average of 60, uh, 60 plus. 80 plus 60 divided. Like, I know the answer is obviously 70. But I'm just trying to show you, you can put in the formula to get average. All right, we've got that circle there. And th we want to line the angle of this angle over here is, uh, so this is 90 and this is 45. Right, because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we want an angle between 45 and 90. That should be doable. The angle is going to be, uh, again, average will do 90 plus 45 over 2. No, not over 2. Over two. Right, and so we have this point over here. Now I think we can finish sketch. I think we can move this nut to that direction now. So this bolt. Move, we're going to do point for point. We're going to select this body. We're going to select the point over here. We probably could have uh, skipped the step and just pressed it straight away, but we got this. So we moved it over. So we moved the nut into that specific location. Now what we also have to do is it is put inside the object, I think. So what we're going to do is we're just going to align it. We are going to uh, modify, align, we will hide this body so we can actually see some stuff. We want, and we'll hide this body as well. We want this center to align with, all right, cool. So we have our nut over there. Um, if we show everything, we can now, we're gonna make another pattern. But I'm going to show you, we can do pattern. We previously did a pattern with sketching. You can also do pattern with objects uh, or bodies, sorry. So uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hide this sketch. We don't need this sketch anymore. Um, we are going to create pattern, circular pattern again. We're going to press this object. Uh, we don't want faces, we want bodies. We'll press this body over here. Uh, the axis, we want this axis over here. Now we can, if we just press this cylinder, the cylinder already has an axis, so we can just use the axis of that cylinder. All right, and then we have all the nuts going around here. We have eight things, so let's just say we have eight nuts, so eight bolts going around. We press OK. Awesome. So we have that, and with this part sticking out the back there, we should. 
we should have a yeah just for graphics sake let's go let's make ourselves a nut to go in here um, we made heaps of bodies let's go and create let's make a what will it look like uh, hmm. well, we can measure our approximate size over here uh, it's going to look something like this over here what is this this over here is Radius one point so it's two mil. So yes, uh, four mil diameter. So we just need a shape that looks like uh, this, a line that goes like this, and then goes up by four mil. No, so why is it always where I want to click? Goes up by two mil. the diameter of this. This is 8 mil, so let's just make it up by 8. And the only dimension I care about is this length to this length over here. It has to be uh, divided by 2. Alright, so let's just say that's the shape that we want. Finish. Let's revolve this. We want to revolve this shape by this. Okay, uh, now uh, oh, really? Oh, we did it in the side. Okay, never mind. Um, so we have this shape over here. Let's give this, uh, because it's a nut, let's make it look like a one uh, ch -ch -ch polygon. Uh, inscribe circle over here. Like this. Finish. Let's go and extrude it. And as we extrude this, normally it's going to cut, but instead of the cutting, let's do the intersect. Which will give us this nice shape over here. Looks nice. And oh, why don't I just show off and be a bit super fancy? Let's go and how do I do that? Uh, this is the last sketch we had. This sketch over here. Not that sketch. This sketch. Let's go and uh, this sketch over here. Let's actually modify this sketch that we just had. And let's create a fillet over here. Oh, hold on. I'm trying to make it smooth because I want to show off. No, not this one, this one. Hide. Right. Let's sketch over here. I want to edit this sketch. What I'm trying to do is I want to. Oof, done. So what I did there is I changed the shape of it that it was rotating about, so it's going to get that smooth part. Uh, so the same thing we did with the nuts. We are going to align up. We'll align up this nut from point to point. We want to select this body. We want to select the origin point. We'll select this tube over here. The target point is over here. So we've done that. Um, yep. And then if I unhide all the bodies, right, we can align the nut up to the we can align the nut up to the disc plate by pressing uh, not that one, align. Align. We can choose by aligning this shape to here. There you go. And then we'll do the same thing how we'll do a revolving copy. Oh, sorry, a revolving pattern, circular pattern. We'll click this body over here. This axis will be this shape, any of these circles, because they all share the same circle. Oh, no, 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 no. This body over here. The axis will be this one over here. 
And again, we'll copy it eight times. All right. Should be all good. All right. So now we have the very basis of our disc break. We have done sketches. We've made bodies. And I showed you patterns. And we have multiple parts in this drawing. All right. And like we guessed with the dimensions, but that's basically it. We have the break here. We have multiple parts. Uh, we could color code them, but I don't think we really need to color code them. But we see here, if you put the detail in the part once, when you copy it, it's better to put the detail in the original part because it's going to show itself uh, multiple times. And it looks really nice when you start to get copies of parts coming out. Uh, let's go now. So I'm just going to save this. Save it. I uh, will save this as... Uh, that's not this class, but I'm going to keep it in this class anyway. Uh, break. Break explosion drawing example. Save. All right, so now that we've saved this, let's... Um, let me show you when we bring it to drawing. First, I'll, I might as well show you how this would normally go to drawing. You have this break over here. I mean once it uploads and saves. I'll unpause it after it saves. All right, so we have the break. Now that we have this break, we can go to the design tab, but let's go down to drawing and say from design. So this is the design that we have here. If um, all these other standard uh, features we have of the drawing, like create new, we're creating a new drawing, uh, template, ISO, A3, a3 is the standard size for engineering drawings, so just go with that. And if we press OK, we should load up the new tab. It's going to load up the drawing part of Fusion 360. Your time may vary depending on how long it takes to load up. But notice how we have all the different uh, operations at the top. Um, we'll just let this load up. All right, once it's loaded up, you should be granted to a, a drawing view page like this. This is where, notice how, as I hover my mouse over the sheet, you see a sort of 3D version of your part. There, it's like it's got the colors. Um, if your break was purple for whatever reason, you would show that purple part there. It's also a low resolution drawing. I haven't clicked on the mouse yet. I just dragged it across. Now, why you do this is you can see what the general size of your part's going to be. It is scaled as 1 to 5 right now. It's going to try to be smart and pick a scale that's good for you. Right, but sometimes you, depending on what you're drawing, you're going to pick a better scale. So that's my part there. I think that's too small. What if I did 1 to 2? Yeah, let's just do this for now. So I have this break over here. I'm going to press. If I click my mouse over there, and then I press OK. The drawing is going to instantly change from, three, from the 3D drawing to what you'd expect in a drafting technical drawing. Right? It's like all lines. Right, then uh, we can go to drawing views. We can do a projection view where we click this particular shape. And if we go to the side, we have a drawing there. And we can go up and we can do the top view. Now, obviously, because we're a break, our top and side view is going to be the same, and you can also do a 3D view if you wanted to. Um, and then you have your, your drawing uh, in your dimensions. And I believe if we, bring, if we drag this, all the drawings follow suit, so as in they always stay aligned up. Uh, then you can add dimensions by pressing this one over here. You can press dimensions, and we can click the particular shapes you want to get dimensions for. So if we wanted the dimension for that, we can get the dimensions for this circle in the middle. Uh, all of our things are circles, so going to have a weird time in doing those dimensions. Uh, you can do like that, 8 millimeters. Um, I don't know if you can do this. I don't know if you can do that line to that line. I don't know. I don't know if that's a useful dimension or not, but uh, this will be a useful dimension over here. We can do the dimension of this piece over here. If you zoom in, thank you. Five millimeters. Uh, maybe we want to do here to here. Sixty. Uh, we can even do an angle if we press here to here. You're given a lovely angle, uh, forty-five or whatever you want. 
So you do it like that, 135. Uh, you can do all that. So that's our base drawing. Now, let's go over here. When we went to drawing, you had the option to do a drawing from an animation. So let's have a look at what the animation is. The animation is this tab over here. And animation creates and animates how the design would be look, look like when it's been assembled. So if we click animation, we should have this over here. And oh, do we all have to make them all individual components, don't we? Uh, Uh, okay, so this over here, even though we have individual parts, it's all still one component. Now, this is the first time you're going to... Um, like, what's the difference between a body and a component? And the words are sort of interchangeably in the regular world, but in Fusion, a body is just a different material, but it's still part of the same element. It's still the same thing. Like, a remote control for a TV has... Uh, could have a different colored plastic all over the place and they could be glued together. They're not going to move separately. Um, or like a, your phone has your screen glued onto, uh, onto the backing. When, that's where you have different parts. We want to make all these different components. So well, how do we do this? We construct, we, I believe we right click all the bodies and I think we can make them components. Uh, I think we can go here and we can shift Right click, and I think we can create component from bodies. And so now these are all individual components. Right? Every component has its own bodies. Um, another way you can think of components, components are parts that can move relative to each other, which is going to obviously going to matter if you do like animation or stuff that's moving like a hinge. Um, but bodies are all grouped together if they're in the same component. So now when we go to animation, uh, or did I, did I have to save it? I think I have to save it. I think I have to save. Yep. So now we have all these components. We can go here, animation. Now I think we can auto explode. Or what? No, components. They're all components. What are you talking about? I have to press this. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Right, so let me just explain what I did there. So, in the part, so this is what it should look like when you start off. Um, you go in here, you look at your components, you can, this is from this this particular job. In animation you can combine multiple CAD files together, I assume. Um, in here we want just, we want, let's just go and select all the components, but for some reason maybe you might not want to put all of them in your explosion drawing. So I'm just going to click this one over here, which selects all the components, and then under transform you can choose to move every one, uh, so you can, move to, you can choose to move every component individually. So say I just want to move this bolt like this. You can do that. Uh, but let's, I like to just do the easy way and press them all and go automatic explosion, which is then just going to get all the parts and move them out. You can choose how far you want them to move out and you can also make a visible, a visible line. So this is like your Ikea drawings or your Lego uh, instructions have something like this. And if we look, we can also look around, we have this. And I believe because it is done this way, if you press OK, you should be able to view it there's the play button down the bottom. If we press play, whew, look at that. You can actually turn it into a video. That's because I rotated and pressed the animation. But we have this. What we really want this to be used for is when we go to our drawing, we can say drawing from animation. So if we press from animation, um, this is the storyboard. Um, I believe this is the storyboard we're dealing with right now. Oh. Down here, in the very bottom of my screen. This part over here, storyboard one. I believe you can make more storyboards to do different types of animations. So this one over here is storyboard one, which is over here. We can press OK, 
And let's see if we're going to do the same thing, if we can get a nice uh, drawing. Uh, coming out of this animation. And then we'll see if we can do, um, I'll end that tutorial there once I do that animation. And then I'll start another tutorial showing you how to render it to make it look cool. All right, so I now have this part. Um, I can bring it in. So uh, I click the shape over there. Notice how it's the expanded view. Now, I believe the problem we have is this is the exploded drawing. And because our storyboard, where was it? Has our storyboard disappeared? Because our storyboard is already at an angle, it's coming out as an angle over here. So if I try to do my projection, it's going to look weird. Right? That's not an ideal projection shape. But I believe we can... I believe we can uh, edit this. We can choose to do the style, um, orientation, isometric. Instead, let's just do the side view. Oh, nice. Oh, look at that. Ooh. There. Oh, that's it. Yep. Um, but it depends what you're doing. If you want it to be for like an instruction manual, maybe the isometric view is the best one. Because this is a very simple part, but if you have a more advanced part, oh, it's frozen. Awesome. Uh, oh, come on, stop embarrassing me in front of my YouTube viewers. So now that we've, my fusion's done having a, a fit, uh, we've got over here, top view, all good. I say isometric. This view over here might be, if you're doing a, an instruction manual or um, if you've bought a piece of furniture from IKEA and they show you the full, like what the whole part involves, sometimes they like doing an isometric. It, it looks good for an explosion drawing because it gives the the user, shh, it gives the user an understanding of what the part is, right? But let's just say I want it to do. I want to do it for this view. Close, and then you can do the same thing. You can do dimensions. I believe you can do that, the dimensions are done as the drawing is done for whatever reason. If you what changes are made, oh what stop? It's so laggy. Uh, but you can, as you see before that it lagged out. You can actually do dimensions from the animation. This is useful if you're making like an elbow, for example. Um, if you're making a bionic elbow, as it expands, it's changing its angle. Um, you can do the animation, you can do it at separate storylines, and then you can measure that angle and show it. Uh. <gasps> Alright, so let's say you like, oh, it froze again. Let's say you like this drawing. Oh, why, does, why does it keep freezing? Alright, so my fusion just crashed, but I opened it up. Um, I believe the problem was, this is technically a live document, so as you adjust your model, the drawing is going to update itself. And so, if you're having a problem where it's crashing a lot, save and close your previous models. So I should have closed my model of my disk break, so it wouldn't try to keep on updating it from the website. Uh, but let's say I still got my drawing over here, I'm just going to try to finish this tutorial before we crash again. I have this drawing, I have my dimensions, I can fill out this box here with whatever information I want. Um, let's say I've done that. Um, over here in the top right hand corner you can output, I believe you can output as um, a PDF, you can output as a drawing, uh, DXF. These are good if you want to go straight to like Illustrator. Uh, so if you want to laser cut something on your model, you can uh, output as a, yeah, as a drawing and then use that. Um, I believe... CSV should be like, um, that's Excel stuff, right? I, I reckon that would be all the individual points of the curve. Not completely sure. I haven't done output as CSV, but uh, if you want to play around with it, have at it. Let's say we output as PDF. I should do this. Um, this is the only sheet I want down here. If you make multiple sheets for your drawings, so you have multiple views, for example, you can choose which sheets you want. Uh, let's go to create, okay. I believe it's going to print somewhere. Uh, break. 
PDF. And I don't particularly want to open this because um, our Illustrator, so our Adobe is having weird moments right now. But uh, it's saved in a PDF. Actually, I'll pause it and then I'll get it open. So if you open it up in uh, PDF, you get this over here. If you are going to be adding pictures into your report, this is how I, I expect it to be like this. Get the PDF. Um, I believe you can convert that PDF into a JPEG and insert it into your um, report. Uh, but get this nice, clean looking image into the report. Ah, go away. Um, and you have that shape. Um, and that's it for the tutorial for this one. I'll do another tutorial where I'll show you how to do rendering so we can get some color onto our break. And um, maybe I'll even do a, a stress test. That'll also look cool. <laughs>